Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some really good stuff. First up, Anthony Pompliano of the Pomp Podcast had Chairman Heath Tarbert of the CFTC on, and it was pretty revealing with cryptocurrency and digital assets and mostly blockchain, Bitcoin, Ethereum, how the government needs to catch up. The U.S. wants to be a technological leader, but they need to do a lot of things so they can remain so. Plus, what his plans for the future are for digital assets. Also, to further prove Tarbert's point, the digital yuan now accepted in some gas stations in Chinese cities. And this is just one more story where the Chinese government is way, way, way ahead of everybody globally for CBDCs and adoption of cryptocurrencies. And on Bright News, Chainlink now lets you control your Tesla car. And this is a great story about innovation and how cryptocurrency digital assets are going to be integrated into everybody's everyday life. And finally, a record high backed Bitcoin delivery exposes institutional frenzy for Bitcoin. And it's a good story, but there's one thing that I actually learned about this one, and that is that backed is heavy into physically settled Bitcoin. And we'll get into all that, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So this is our second video of the day. So if you caught the first one, congratulations. That was uh, just uh, okay. This one, I feel, was pretty darn good. So what's going on? Pretty much the same thing. So there is a, a little issue with OKX, the uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Apparently there's one person uh, that controls all the uh, private keys and uh, he has been arrested by the Chinese authorities. So there's a little hiccup going on there, but that doesn't really change anything for the market as far as the fundamentals. However, uh, it will change the prices. So Bitcoin is up only a little 0.2% uh, after a little bit of a tumble there at three. So uh, holding strong at 11.3. Ethereum uh, down from around 380 to 367, but still 0.7 in the last 24 hours. And we're actually seeing a little bit of a reversal, which is pretty good. XRP is up uh, 1.3 for Binance Coin. Everything's up a little bit. Uh, not everything. 1.7 for Cardano. <clears throat> and remember, this is actually after the dip that happened yesterday. So we're going to see a little bit of a rebound, which is not too bad. But again, nothing has changed. Uh, Bitcoin hasn't been hacked. No one's come out and said, hey, this is, you know, just everything's going to go to zero and it's just awful. It's just uh, an exchange that got ahead of itself. And uh, we, of course, depending on how you look at it, I uh, have to pay a price or it's a golden opportunity because uh, for some of you people out there that uh, took some advice and said, hey, you know what? This is a flash sale. I got to get something. And now you're up, you know, who knows, three, two, three percent, something like that. Uh, but there are some ones that are just laggards and uh, that's just how it is. So we got uh, what are the biggest losers. The biggest loser probably would be OKB, which is the token for OKX. Of course, it's down 16 percent for 24 hours, 32 percent for the week. And uh, that only makes sense. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top stories. So first up, this was fascinating. This was a, a great interview with Anthony Pompliano and uh, the chairman of the CFTC, uh, Heath Tarbert. And uh, it's, it always amazes me because when I look at, at Pomp's show, first of all, you have a ton of subscribers, 115,000. Good for him. He deserves it. He got a lot of uh, great information out there. But when he has something on like this, I, I look at him like, well, this should be like, you know, a big news story because we're going to see exactly what the thoughts of the government. When I look down here, I'm like, man, 4,000 views. That's crazy. And that was just uh, two days ago. So you would think that there'd be like a ton as opposed to like the CEO of MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor, came on and he got like 40, 50, 60,000 views. So it's just a little bit of, a, of an oddity. I don't really understand why that is. But maybe it's because people just look at governments and like, well, he just represents government and they're slow and, and really they're out of touch and who cares. But it was a fantastic interview. And there's a ton of great uh, nuggets and information that really should be put out there. So I'm just going to highlight three points that I thought were the biggest ones. And uh, let's just jump in. So first up, Pomp asked him a good question. He goes, hey, you know, the U.S. wants to be, you know, a leader in technology uh, especially with these uh, CBDCs, uh, these uh, central bank digital coins, uh, is that in the cards anytime soon before the rest of the globe passes us by? Because we're going to talk about a story about China and digital yuan. Uh, they're way ahead of everybody, and especially America. So, uh, what's going on? And it's 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 just great to kind of you know look back behind the curtain and see what what the thoughts of uh, a high ranking official is and how it's all going to play out. So let's take a listen. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Bob. And Really where I stand is I want to see the United States lead in blockchain technology. For me, it's not necessarily something that the government needs to be and, and be involved with directly, but there could be benefits to that as well. But I really want to see the United States continue to support innovation in this space because I do see other countries coming in 
and starting to potentially take the lead. And I think it's really important that a, de a democracy such as ours uh, continues to be on the forefront of this for the future of the global financial system. For central bank currencies in particular, I think ultimately I'm going to obviously uh, defer to my fellow colleagues at the Federal Reserve. But what I will say is that I think it is critical that the U.S. dollar remain the, the world's reserve currency. Uh, certainly, it should remain the world's reserve currency based on the fundamental impact of the dollar. And I would hate to see a situation where people are no longer using the U.S. dollar, not because there's been major macroeconomic changes, but rather that the U.S. has fallen behind in technology. So I know the Federal Reserve and other, other central banks around the world are having discussions about central bank digital currencies. And, and to some extent, there's kind of a metaphysical question as to, well, should it actually be a digital currency on a blockchain, or can we simply speed up our payment systems? But the bottom line is that I think everyone agrees that our payment mechanisms in the United States and in many countries around the world uh, are, have not kept pace with technology. And so I think we definitely want to put a lot of thought and emphasis into the debate, the discussion. And regardless if we go to an actual central bank digital currency or we just go to a more sophisticated payment system, I agree that something has to be done. So there's a lot to unpack there. And uh, first things first, I will just uh, uh, say the elephant in the room. It's whatever you're into right now, whatever you're heavily invested into, um, you just heard that and you thought to yourself, you know what that is? That is VeChain. You know what that is? That is Bitcoin. You know what that is? That is XRP. That is Stellar. That is blah, blah, blah. It's just amazing how like who, whatever you invested in, in into, that is your your thing. And you know what? You could be right. <laughs> I'm not here to, to, to debate, you know, what, what it is or what it isn't. But it, it is interesting to see, you know, the chairman of the CFTC come onto a podcast, answer some questions about cryptocurrency and digital assets, uh, blockchain in particular, and just really kind of lay it all out there. Can you imagine this happened in 2017? Again, people would have lost their minds and they were like, you know what? To the moon. Lambo and everything else in three short years, three short years, we are already here. And what he just saw, talked about, and he said, you know what, I, I hope that the uh, American government still has the uh, reserve currency of the US dollar. And it probably will, but it is weakening. And we know that's what's happening. He realizes just what I think everybody realizes that America is losing pace. We are falling far, far behind because we have no clarity and we have no backbone in areas of Congress and the people that are supposed to be put in place to actually get things done. And this is the reason why we are going to fall behind. I mean, I mean, massively behind of what's happening. So I just see a lot of problems coming up. I mean, thankfully, uh, we've got uh, this gentleman here, Heath, who really just puts it out and goes, you know what? I want to see America do well. I want to see these things happen. And I want to ha have a little bit more clarity so we can kind of give a little bit more guidance. And he's going to talk more about that in a little bit. But one last thing, it was pretty interesting to note that he talked about really there's going to be two options. We're either going to go uh, CBDCs, uh, central bank digital coins or central bank digital currencies, or we're going to go into an opposite direction and improve the rails that we have. And what he's talking about is SWIFT and just how awful that is. And uh, it just really depends on uh, really who gets a foothold and who realizes uh, and, and actually who is uh, advocating for it uh, in these these government institutions and says, hey, we need to do this and we're going to go this route. So right now we are on this path and, and it can diverse in, into one of two ways I see it. Either we're going to try to upgrade this old crappy system or we're just gonna say, you know what, that is just old. Let's just go to the new system, which we know is gonna work. Uh, we can, I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but we can fix it as opposed to, you know, putting lipstick on a pig. All right, and the, and the next part blew me away because it was a great question. Anthony says, hey, you know what, this is the problem with, with government is that you guys are slow. And crypto is moving at light speed. I mean, look what just happened with, with DeFi. So how is the, C, the CFTC and the rest of the government actually going to keep up and make informed decisions? Because that is your job. And he answers it perfectly. Let's take a listen. Uh, that we always want to stay ahead of the curve. So then becomes the question, well, how do you do that? Particularly, how do you do that in a federal government agency that is required by law to come up with a five-year plan? Uh, almost like the Soviet Union, right? And so we do have a very different culture than Silicon Valley. Um, I think the, the, a couple of keys to that. Number one is education, education, education. And so 
We've created uh, Lab CFTC a few years ago. When I came in, we actually elevated Lab CFTC, our innovation arm, to report directly to the chairman. And it is essentially a liaison between uh, the regulator and those that will be regulated, as well as those that are developing new technologies in Silicon Valley, elsewhere in California, and all over the world. And so we want to learn as much as we can, and we want to listen to the right, to the blockchain community. And at the same time, we hope the blockchain community would listen to us to learn a little bit about our regulatory framework. So there truly is a meeting of the minds. But in terms of education, uh, just during the pandemic, our lab CFTC has held something like 60 different courses. And I myself have had, have taken tutorials. So for a series of six to eight weeks, every Wednesday and Thursday night, I would sit down and I have a course on various types of, of technologies. I'd learn the, the, you know, the Shaw 256, how the algorithm works, really get into the details because I feel like, look, at the end of the day, this is under my purview and I owe it to, to the blockchain community to at least understand it to a level that I can make informed policy decisions. And then the final thing I would say is in Washington, there's a mantra personnel is policy. It all comes down to the people in many cases. So we've looked and I've tried to hire people that come from the tech community. So our new head of lab CFTC, she came from a Silicon Valley based company Two, one person in my office, as well as one of our division directors came from a cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, and then finally, we just hired one of the few PhD Ivy league economists in the world with a background in crypto. So it's really important that we have those people in the agency. And so while we're, not, we're never going to have the kind of innovative culture that, that a Silicon Valley based firm has, for example, we can at least have people that are familiar with the technology that want to learn and that are willing to take risk. Would you have ever expected an answer like that to come from anybody high up in the U.S. government as far as cryptocurrency digital assets and what they're actually doing to stay ahead of the curve. When I listen to that, I listen to it four times, at least four times. I'm blown away. And I listen to it again. I'm like, I can't believe that is uh, really the answer uh, that uh, this is that is coming out of this guy's mouth. I mean, what this is saying to me is that there are some, some, and I'm not going to say all, there are some uh, very educated people uh, in in the government that are uh, have our best interests at heart. And when he talked about, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's about, you know, understanding what's going on in the cryptocurrency community. And then hopefully they will listen to us about policy. So there is a give and take. And I have to say, uh, it's very impressive just to hear uh, what's going on. So the last part, Anthony Pompliano just says, hey, there's a new bill coming up through the drafts. It's called the Digital Commodity Exchange Act of 2020. Uh, how will the CFTC implement the, this rule if it does get passed as far as and then as far as other regulations that are going to come out of the pipe to give clarity to the United States, because that's really what we're all asking for. It's not a really hard thing to do. It's just a, it's a, it's a hard thing to actually get there and just iron it out. But once it's there, it's set. How is the CFT, how is the CFTC going to actually implement this and how can they make it happen? Well, Pomp, when I talk to the blockchain community and the crypto community, uh, there are two things that I think I always hear. Um, and, and number one there's a lack of clarity. There's a lack of clarity as to how these things should be regulated. And the first threshold is, is it a security or is it a commodity? Very different. Uh, there, there are sort of two diversion paths in the road. One leads to the SEC and a very different type of regulation. The other, if it's a commodity, leads into airspace, which is a more principles-based approach. And I think in, in some cases is, is favored by many people in the crypto community. Um, so that's one thing. And so we need clarity at some point. We need a lot more clarity so people, as they're designing products, as they're experimenting with products, can really kind of understand how they will be regulated in the end because it could very well affect the value as well as, as how, it, how it performs and how it's set up. The second big issue I hear is that because there's some, there's, there's the uncertainty, overlaying that is the fact that there's complete fragmentation. Well, there are 50 states. So if you're a cryptocurrency exchange now, you have to deal with every single jurisdiction, not only in the United States, but abroad, but certainly in the U.S., where, where you, you must have to register, there are requirements. And so the founding fathers, going way back, talking about innovation, well, I think 1787 was a great year for innovation because it was the year of our Constitution. But one of the things the founding fathers, I think, got right is federalism and the idea that 
If something is in interstate commerce, it should be re regulated federally so we could have a national economy. And then other things were left to the states. Well, I can't think of anything more emblematic of interstate commerce than blockchain. And so if, you, if we're able to have a single federal regulatory regime, that will create what's called preemption also in the Constitution, which basically allows federal law to be supreme, but you have one law to apply to comply with. And therefore, you don't have to worry about the patchwork of 50 different states. And so it may very well be that for some areas, certain consumer protections, it makes sense to have the states involved and the states play an important role. But for other aspects, it may make far more sense to have a single federal regime that will allow innovation, provide clarity, and then also allow this to, to grow in a way that it can in other countries because they don't have the fragmentation. So again, it's all we're asking for is a little clarity. So if they can push through bills and they actually make things happen, so much the better. I know some people out there are like, I don't want the government involved because cryptocurrency is, you know, should be for the people and it's decentralized. And Look, I get it. I understand. That's how a lot of us got into it. But in all honesty, it's a lot easier to start a revolution from the inside uh, going out than from the outside going in. So we need these types of things to actually push the innovation and to actually push cryptocurrency digital assets into the public consciousness to where it actually should be for the people. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I think this is actually a, a great thing and a, and a step in the right direction. Now he does talk and he says specifically blockchain, he says that many times, but throughout the whole interview, and I cut some things out, obviously, uh, he does talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum uh, specifically. So if you want to watch this entire interview, I'm going to link that in the description of this video and let me know what you think i mean to me i think this is awesome i think this is exactly what uh, we, sh we should be doing we should be talking to these people we should be seeing what the government wants to do so we can actually get things moving uh because we need clarity and we need government officials who are actually educated in what is going on in this space because just like you and me once they get educated and they figure out how great it is then it's just a snowball effect and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger all right let me just think in the comment section let's move on